We've been making our musical analysis of happy birthday, but musical analysis can be analyses. They can be multiple. We can have multiple theories to describe the same thing. And the more complicated the music, the more likely it is that professional musicians even disagree about theory, about what chords certain notes are making, for example. Musical theory is just theory after all. And the more complicated, the more all folded up music gets, the more theoretical the theory becomes. Happy birthday is quite simple though. And we have theorized that when we play G, G, A, G, C, B, we are in C major, that we begin with the dominant degree of the scale and proceed to the submedian. Still, that's not the only possible interpretation. It's just the most musically sensible one. It's the most likely, the most natural or immediate interpretation, but it's not the only possible one. The next most probable interpretation is that we are playing a tune in G major here rather than C major, beginning with the tonic rather than the dominant. If we are in G major, how would we now describe the melody which we previously were describing as 5-5-6-5-8-7? Five, 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 G, G, A, G, C, B in G major is of course not 5-5-6-5-8-7 five, 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 anymore, even though they are the same notes. So what is G, G, A, G, C, B in G major? G is 1, of course, so... 1, 1, 2, 1... Uh... Four, three. Very good. One, one, two, one, four, three. So this is another possible musical analysis for the first phrase of happy birthday. It's not an especially likely one, so it's fair to say that there's no meaningful ambiguity about what key we are in. Simply, we are subconsciously aware of how we could be in G major. That's because, of course, our subconscious is counting the hertz and the relationships between those values, between those numbers, trying to figure out which note exploded and created all of these other notes. It looks like it's safe to assume it's C, but G major is still a possibility, and so account for G is still ongoing. That horse is still in the race. Is there any other key G, G, A, G, C, B could be in? To check, we just need to look at our system of sharps and flats. So we know the first sharp to appear in sharp keys is F sharp, which belongs to G major. What is the second sharp when we count sharps? F sharp is the first. Uh, C sharp? C sharp, of course. So we know we are not in any other sharp key because we have a C here rather than a C sharp. So G, G, A, G, C, B can't be in any other sharp key apart from G major. What is the first note we flatten when we look to flat keys or keys with flats? B flat? B. B flat. Do we have a B here in G, G, A, G, C, B? Yes. Yes. Is it flat? No. No. So these notes could only belong to C major or G major. They don't fit with any other key. Something that helps us be sure that we are in C major is the chords we are playing along with the melody. We have a C major chord come in on the submedian, as we've seen. And then on the B, the seventh degree, we have a G major chord, which I haven't been playing previously. If the C major chord is called the tonic chord in C major because it's based on the tonic note, what is the G major chord called when it appears in the key of C major? So if the chord based on C is called the tonic chord, the chord based on G in C major is called? G major is going to be the dominant chord. The dominant chord, of course. It's very common for chords to alternate between the tonic and the dominant, as we have here in Happy Birthday. This keeps a kind of movement underscoring the music. The movement between chords is called chord progression, and so moving between the tonic and dominant chords is a very common chord progression in music. This helps us understand that we are in C major, the fact that we have the tonic and dominant chords playing during this phrase. 
So we are quite confident that we are hearing dominant, dominant, submedian in the melody. Ambiguity is not a huge feature at this stage, and so the experience of the scale degree functions is at the forefront of our musical experience, rather than any ambiguity. We experience the energized dominant urging us to move, and then we experience the submediant degree, as well as the major second between these two notes. as we move upwards towards the tonic. After that, we move back down to the dominant again, back to the point of maximum tension, before resolving that tension by jumping up to the tonic. Now this might sound quite unresolved because of our pre-existing expectations of happy birthday. When we play, We're waiting for the next note, but that's because we know how Happy Birthday goes. We of course know this tune very well, so we are expecting the following note to resolve our expectations of hearing the whole phrase as we know it. But those aren't strictly tonal expectations, they are rather artificial expectations we have from knowing the song. If I break the rhythm of Happy Birthday and thus destroy the melody, relieving us of this artificial expectation, it's easy to appreciate how the tonic here does offer tonal resolution. Can you feel that? Yeah. And especially with the chord. But that possibility of resolution is very short-lived because right after the tonic, we play the last note of the phrase, which lasts twice as long as the tonic we just played. These are quarter notes. So what is this if it's twice as long? Two quarter notes is an eighth note. It's a half note. Two quarter notes is a half note, but of course there are two eighth notes in a quarter note. So this half note, which occupies the first two beats of the measure, and is the last note in the phrase, is of course a B. G, G, A, G, C, B. What scale degree is B in C major? What number in the degrees? Uh, six? Seven. Seven. The seventh. It's the seventh degree, which is what interval from the tonic in major scales? So you don't have to count, because we know it's the seventh degree. And we know it's a major scale, so? Well, seventh. Major seventh. A major seventh, of course. And a minor seventh in minor scales. So all major intervals are minor in minor scales, with one important exception, the major second, of course, the supertonic, which is major in both scales, being the fifth of the fifth. So the seventh degree, a major or minor seventh from the first tonic, depending on the scale, is called the leading tone which suggests that this seventh interval is not the most important thing about the scale degree. The leading tone, of course, leads to the second tonic, and the fact it is named for this reason highlights to us that this role of leading to the second tonic is its most important one. Something that helps this degree fulfill this role is that in major scales, it is always just a half step from the second tonic. There's only a half step, of course, from B to C, from leading tone to tonic here. What is the leading tone of G major? F sharp. F sharp, of course. Just a half step from G. And the only sharp no, that we have in G major. And now we know why we add a sharp every time we find a new sharp key from the dominant of the previous key. Rearranging the notes order, say, from starting on C to starting on G, we maintain all the major scale intervals apart from the last one, which we have to raise a half step. In G major, that's F to F sharp. After G, the key with one sharp, what is the next key, the key with two sharps? D. D. And the additional sharp for that key is, of course... C sharp. C sharp because this is D major, and we need the leading tone a half step away from D. What will be the next scale after D? Ah, A. A major. A major, and the next sharp, so A major has three sharps, so it has F sharp, C sharp, and... G 
G sharp, of course, the leading tone of A. Being closer to the second tonic, the leading tone leads better. It's just a hairline away from resolution. That makes us itch for that resolution. Can you feel that tension to get to C? By the time we get to B? Yeah. Holding your breath. So that's leading tone tension. So melodically, the leading tone has an important function and can have a lot of musical tension, much like the perfect fifth does. Only these tensions are the result of different mechanics, different numbers. So the tension of the leading tone to arrive at the tonic will feel different to the tension of the perfect fifth to arrive at the tonic. And both of these sensations will feel different in different contexts. There's the fifth going to the tonic, and here's the leading tone going to the tonic. In the case of Happy Birthday, the leading tone tension is being influenced or moderated by the fact that we've already heard the destination of the leading tone, the second tonic, the C, which we hear just before hearing the leading tone. We fall back to the leading tone, to the B, from the very destination to which it leads, which conditions the tension of the leading tone considerably. Maybe it helps us take our destination for granted, as we might like to with birthdays. When we wish many more happy birthdays, that wish is somewhere between hope and expectation. We expect the access to the tonic note that we desire, after just having stepped down only a half step from it. We allow ourselves to participate in the harmless pursuit of tension and release, in celebration of something we don't like to consider the alternative to. So this isn't an uncomfortable tension, it's quite a hopeful one. But that doesn't make it any less tense in the mechanical sense. Finishing on the leading tone really does feel unresolved and motivates us to continue listening. This melodic phrase is an isolatable unit, but we can feel that it's also part of a whole. The dominant chord that we play with the B which of course begs for a resolution, just like the leading tone it shares the beat with, also helps us achieve this understanding, that this phrase is part of a wider whole, and so we are motivated to continue listening. So now we know the name of the leading tone, we can run through our seven scale degree names. Now we know them all. So the first is... All of them, I wouldn't know the... Uh... This is a good point about thinking. Third. Hold on, hold on, I want to stop you because you've just said all of them I wouldn't know. <laughs> right, so well, the, the thought process of going, do I know them all, is a really loose thought process. Going one by one and focusing one at a time and asking yourself, do I know that one, is a totally different thought process. We start with the tonic, then the supertonic, is the next the median. Yep. Fourth. Now, if the fourth doesn't come to you, look at the fifth, maybe that will help you remember the fourth. The fifth is the dominant, so the fourth is the subdominant. Excellent. The sixth and seventh. The sixth had something to do with the median. So it's the submedian, and the seventh is the, the leading tonic. The leading? Tone. The leading tone. Which leads to? The tonic. The tonic again. No? So those are our scaled degree numbers from 1 to 8 in names. Tonic. So let me repeat it. Uh, tonic, supertonic, median, subdominant, dominant, submedian, and this leading tone. And then the tonic. Well done. Tonic, the supertonic, median, subdominant, dominant, submedian, leading tone, and then back to the tonic. So something the degree names, as a collective, show us that the degree numbers don't, is how the scale degrees are oriented in equal measure around the two tonics. Looking at the degree names, we realise that half of the scale degrees are actually named in relation with the second tonic, the eighth degree, and the other half in regards to the first. The subdominant, the submedian, and the leading tone all of these names refer to the relationship with the second tonic, whilst the names supertonic, median and dominant, on the other hand, all refer to a relationship with the fundamental tonic, the first degree. In other words, the degree numbers 2, 3 and 5 relate more to 1, and numbers 4, 6 and 7 relate more to 8, according to the degree names at least. 
Let's take this opportunity to have a recap about some of the characteristics of the scale degrees. So the tonic, the tonic is home, the starting point and the destination. It's creator, and I might dare to say, also destroyer or consumer. The tonic creates the notes of the scale before they dance and sing around it and eventually resolve back into it. A little like the theory of the Big Bang. Maybe the universe, or universes, is just one tonic note after another, exploding into everything that will eventually implode back into whence it came. Only on cosmic scales, each note lasts billions of years. Maybe this is what we imitate with tonal music. The tonic is of course both the first and eighth degrees. The same note, one being the double or half the frequency of the other. The eighth degree, the second tonic, is of course also the first degree of a new scale identical to the last, just an octave higher. Putting two tonics in a scale demonstrates the spiral nature of music, or of tonal music. The scale sounds incomplete without the second tonic. In fact, legend has it that this is how Mozart's dad got him out of bed in the morning playing incomplete scales that, he, that Mozart would have to run down to the piano to resolve. But that eighth degree, that destination, is also the first degree of the next octave of the new scale. And on it goes eternally, or at least until the pitches escape our hearing range. The supertonic has the special role of being the fifth of the fifth, or in other words, the dominant of the dominant. Being the furthest thing from the furthest thing from the fundamental tonic, the first degree, the, the supertonic ends up being the closest degree to that tonic, the second degree. The supertonic, super as in above. Being the fifth of the fifth, the supertonic gives us the same interval in both major and minor scales. The supertonic is a major second from the fundamental tonic in both scale types. And so it's the only major interval in minor scales. As well as having a gravity to resolve to the tonic, the supertonic also has a secondary pull to the dominant, being its dominant. And of course, a move to the dominant is the most likely key switch we are likely to experience in a piece of music. So the supertonic can be instrumental in establishing a new tonic from the dominant degree. The median, the mediator, defining whether we have a major or minor chord, is half the half of the octave, or a quarter. We get it by splitting the perfect fifth into two unequal halves and taking either of those resulting quarters for the median, depending on the major or minor quality of the scale. For major scales, we take the bigger quarter, the major third. For minor scales, the smaller quarter, the minor third. The median also demonstrates to us well how the Western music scales depart from the cardinal counting of the overtone series that they ultimately are a representation of. They depart from the simple counting we find in the overtone series in order to create these major and minor qualities. The median is the first and most important scale degree to do this. The subdominant, like the dominant, has two dominant relationships, one with each tonic. It is a perfect fourth from the fundamental tonic, and it is a perfect fifth to the second tonic. The strongest dominant relationship, the perfect fifth, is in regards to the second tonic, so this is the subdominant. Its strongest dominant relationship is when it's below the tonic. The dominant is physically right between the two tonics. It's the furthest point we can get from a tonic note if we're counting in hertz. Still, due to perspective, the perspective of the first tonic that is, that first half of the octave is bigger than the second, and so the dominant, although it's physically in the middle of the scale, is a perfect fifth from the fundamental tonic and a perfect fourth from the second tonic. The submedian, a third below the second tonic and a sixth above the first, represents with its third the other half of the split fifth, from which we sourced our median. If our median generates a major third from the first tonic, our submedian will make a minor third with the second tonic and vice versa. If the median produces a minor third with the first tonic, the submedian produces a major third with the second tonic. This makes the submedian important for bringing alternative opinions or perspectives, so to speak, into the music. The leading tone is the tone that leads to the second tonic and is a major or minor seventh from the first tonic, depending on the scale quality. The leading tone is also known as the subtonic, being below the tonic. In major keys, it's always a half step below the tonic, 
but in minor keys it's a whole step, two half steps from the second tonic. Being close to the tonic is so important to the function of the leading tone that in minor melodies which are climbing, when we want the seventh degree to lead, we raise it a half step to bring it closer to the second tonic in minor scales. So in A minor, when we play for example D, E, G, A, rising, we are going to raise the G a half step to G sharp. if we want to achieve the leading tone quality, which we can feel we do here. But if we are falling, this tone is no longer leading, and so we'd likely play a G rather than a G sharp. Here the note is behaving more like its number, so to speak, more like the seventh degree than like its name, like a leading tone. So whilst the degree names are extremely helpful in opening our minds about what the scale degrees do, they do not describe or dictate every occurrence that we get of a note. The leading tone doesn't always lead. The dominant doesn't always dominate. Both the names and numbers of the scale degrees only represent their most key functions, but any note can be doing any number of things when we look to the wider musical context. And so we don't want to feel limited by these useful descriptions when we are analyzing or writing music. We want them only to inspire a very flexible chain of thought in us. And in this way, we may even feel out new words which sensibly relate to the scale degree names that we've learned. From dominant, we found not only dominate, but also domain and domesticate. Maybe from median or sub or super, we find other related words that help describe functions we discover scale degrees involved in. So all music theory, as it comes in brackets in the course title, is there to help us think, but not to dictate our thinking.